certifications. The DA100, which Gavin has just said he passed. Congratulations, Gavin. Um, so just a little bit about myself. So um, as Gavin mentioned, I'm a principal consultant at Altius. We recently got acquired by Avenard, which some of you might know, so large global Microsoft consultancy. So we're all part of the same same company now, a, a data platform MVP, a chartered accountant, um, also a data analyst associate, which you get from doing the day, DA100. So you'd be good to pleased to hear that I have actually sat the exam and passed it. Um, also Microsoft certified trainer, which is which is quite recent actually. And then the two main communities I run at the moment. So one is called Learn Data Insights, which is all about quizzes and um, courses to help people prepare for the DA100 exam and other other Microsoft exams as well. Um, so that's going to be the focus of kind of today's session and also power platform finance. So this is kind of leveraging my background as an accountant. So I look at we have four, uh, fortnightly webinars on power platform finance related topics. So anything to do with financial modeling. We've had a few sessions on dy um, dynamics integration of power platform, uh, going to look at all sorts of things around kind of visualization and it's a really power apps, power, you know, power automate CDS in, in terms of some of those processes. So really interesting, even if you if you've worked with finance data or you're interested in that kind of space, then do check out some of the webinars on there. So today we're going to look at a few different things. So four key kind of questions that we want to answer with this session. So the first is, well, what is the DA100? Secondly, should you take it? Thirdly, what does it cover? And then fourthly, as you probably covered on here, but how can you prepare for it? So let's go um, into, into the first one. So the DA100 is the new certification for Power BI, and it allows you to become a certified data analyst associate. So you get this certificate. So I set it back in, in April um, and it's valid for two years. So you need to renew it every two years. So I will need to renew that in 2022. And um, if I'd sat the previous exam, I'll need uh, the 7778. So this is this this um, exam replaces the MCSA. So prior to this, there was the MCSA, the 7778 and 7779. So one was Power BI and one was Excel based, so more Power Pivot, but very similar exams. So to be honest, if you could pass one, you could probably pass both. That exam is still running so that you can still get that qualification, the MCSA, but it will retire on 31st of January 2021. So you could get it now and it'll be valid for two years still. But if you come to renew it, you'll need to take this new exam. So this is the new the, the new exam for Power BI. This this is the traditional old one. I still see people taking this because they want that that certified solution associate title as well. Um, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you could take that now if you wanted to. Otherwise, to be honest, I would recommend if you are taking an exam now to take the, the new one, the analyzing data with Power BI, the DA100, and get the certified data analyst associate. And the reason I'm recommending that is because it's a role-based certification. So the real difference between this exam and this one is the BI reporting were very, traditionally Microsoft exams would be very much based on tools. So you'll do an exam on SQL Server or you'll do an exam on Power BI. Whereas now it's based more on roles. So even though obviously in this particular case, it is tied to a, a, a single tool, Power BI, uh, there are other exams are tied to to wider tools, to a wider set of tools, and it's based more around the role. So it's role based around the data analyst role. And actually, the style of the questions and the style of the exam is also geared towards that. So it's more scenario based questions. It's less off kind of a memory check on things you can remember about functionality of the tool and more about, well, how would you achieve this outcome? using Power BI. So in my mind, that makes it a much better exam. It's much more relevant. It's much more a better test of skills. In, in many ways, it makes it much harder, though, because if you don't have much practical experience with Power BI and if your knowledge is, is quite theoretical, like you've watched videos or read articles or read books, but haven't had the opportunity to do much practical work in Power BI for, you know, at least a, a six months, if not a year or two, I think you're you'll find the exam potentially quite hard. Um, so, so there's the kind of pro and con with it. Whereas I think potentially you could have got away with, I think that the earlier exam with, with more theoretical, less practical knowledge. So just to give you a bit of an idea as to what those kind of um, exams are. So you've got the role-based certifications, which is obviously 
data analyst associate is one of those. You've also got the fundamentals one. So you can see we've got Power Platform Fundamentals and Azure Fundamentals. So Power Platform Fundamentals is, is um, looking across the whole Power Platform. So Power BI, Power Automate, uh, Power Apps, and, and Power BI is still an element of that, but it's it's much more high level. So actually, if you if you have a skills and experience across the whole Power Platform and, and not kind of deep into Power BI, then maybe that's a better qualification, especially if that's the kind of thing you want to do as a role. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you want to be a power platform consultant to do, you know, fairly high level, but, you know, not get into the detail really of any of those particular tools, but, you know, or, you know, you want to focus on power apps and power automate and a bit of power BI, then the power platform fundamentals might be a better one for you. Azure fundamentals is a lot about the data platform stuff. So we can see here, we've got, these are the different kind of areas. So, under Power Platform, you've got the Data Analyst Associate, but you've also got all of these other ones. So if you wanted to go more into Power Platform App Makers, you can you can do that. So that's Power Apps specifically. And you've also got ones for Dynamics and Power Platform. So again, if you were interested in Dynamics, you could you could do that. Or if you were really interested in Dynamics, you could you could go and look and become certified in that particular stack. And obviously Azure is also a huge area as well. You'll see actually, I should circle both actually, because the data analyst associate is also considered as part of the Azure based structures as well. But then you've also got all the other ones, which is to do with data scientists in, in Azure. Um, so Azure machine learning, you've got Azure admin, Azure security. There's, there's tons of Azure based qualifications as well. And this DA100, it is fairly standalone. It's not like you need the DA100 to then go into one of these Azure ones or to one of these Power Platform qualifications. It's not a prerequisite for any other any other certifications or qualifications. It's it's fairly standalone in that regard, which is which is quite nice as well because it means you've earned that that qualification in that tool. So just a little bit of, about what the exam format is. So there's 58 questions. You have up to three hours to answer these. Um, you can do it in less and you know, you can take your time, you can go through go through them once and then mark questions you're unsure about, come back to those. And you know, you can do that a couple of times. You've got enough time, I think, in the exam to to be able to do that. So it's not hugely time pressured. It's it's all computer based, but it's not based on Power BI at all. So you don't use Power BI in the exam. It's it's multiple choice and you're not allowed to use the internet or any material. Um, so when you go into, I mean, I did the initial 7778 um, in a, an exam centre, and I remember there you go into a room, you're not allowed anything, um, you're not even water, obviously you can't take your phone, you can't take anything, they just give you, they give you a, a bit of pen and paper to write on, but that computer they give you has no access to the internet, it can't, you can't do anything on the screen. Um, and then you can also now do it at home, I mean you've been able to do it at home for a while, so it's called a proctored exam. Um, and they make sure that you're in a secluded space. You have to take pictures of your workspace to make sure you haven't got little post-it notes on the wall with, with you know, answers to things. Um, so yeah, no interruptions. You have to have it in quite a disciplined environment. Um, that's that's how it works. Um, the passing score is 70%. Um, it's not necessarily about the questions. Is, it's not. It's not you know one one mark per question. You do get marks for partially correct answers and it's there's, there might be a weighting to it as well so it's not completely obvious in terms of what they relate to um, but you get the results you get both a score report telling you how you did um, I didn't get it straight away because I said it when it was a beta but you can see the example of it here where it's saying you know you've got 80 percent 90 percent 100 percent in in some of these areas um, so this is kind of your percentage in each of the areas and we'll come we'll have a look at each of these areas in the next couple of slides so example for about the question type oh, sorry any questions there i do do feel free to interrupt with any questions by the way if anyone has any feel free to to ask that you don't need to hold them till the end um question types that the vast majority are multiple choice so um you know there'll be they'll, they'll, you also have a few other question types like sequence drag and drops fill in the blanks multi-selects and then you've got a few questions which are kind of case studies so these are where they give you more detailed information. So they'll give you a block of text or you know a scenario about a company, and you know this is they have this many users. They they want to be able to distribute it this way, and then they'll ask you a question, and it, it might be directly relevant to 
to the to the question to the to the text they've given you or it might be you know just somewhat related so they might ask you to to write a DAX statement to to achieve what they want to achieve so it's something like that it's it's um those ones are a little bit more challenging i think and i'll come back to kind of why why that is and, and to be honest when i was doing the exam the first case study question i didn't realize there was a whole tab with background information on there so i was just thinking okay that's weird they've given me asked me this random question without any real context and i went through the first couple of questions without realizing that I got into the second question I realized ah now this makes a lot more sense so um but then I you know when I did that second question it was it was a bit onerous to keep switching back between the question and then trying to find the relevant information back again or commit that to memory again you haven't really got you know to, to write stuff down and things like that it's it's not really that kind of an exam so um yeah, you know, it's it's some of those could be a little bit challenging, but it's not a big part of the exam. The vast majority of it is is these kind of multiple choice type questions. Um, so you don't use Power BI on the actual exam. And so once you finish the section, you can't go back to it. So you do need to go through it section by section. But within a section, you can take your time. You can highlight questions you want to review and come back to. And then you could also flag them for where you want to provide feedback on. And I would recommend um, you do that um so yep you can't you can't write notes during the exam so again that's what makes some of this a little bit a little bit harder so um you know bear that in mind you've got to try and, and do this all from kind of your own knowledge um in your head um so that's kind of are there any questions on the exam itself before we kind of move on if anyone anyone put anything in the chat gavin Catherine? nothing in the no. chat at the moment no. No, okay on. sure Yep, if there are any questions, do please do please ask. So next section was going to just look at whether you should take it. Um, and, you know, I mean, obviously I think you should, but it's not necessarily as clear cut as that, right? Because, so the reasons to take it is it gives you a good goal to work towards. And I, I want to kind of frame that in a sense of, it's a way for you to validate and benchmark your knowledge and experience with Power BI. Um, and this is especially important when actually in your role, you're not necessarily going to work across all the areas of Power BI. Um, you know, it depends on your role. You you might just be, for example, building reports based of data models that other people have built. So you don't have then much experience in the data modeling or the data prep side of, of Power BI. And yet these are areas that are covered in the exam and they're very good to know. So it's very good to have that that breadth of understanding. Um, and actually, if that's one of the things that you want to either demonstrate or that you want to be able to to make sure that you you work towards and I say, look, I want to get a coverage across across the whole breadth of Power BI, then giving yourself a target to, to set an exam that covers the whole breadth of Power BI is a good goal to work towards, I think. Um, uh, but, you know, it's you need to question whether you've spent enough time in that tool working across all of the areas. So, you know, before, as I say, it, it is quite practical based as well. So you want to try and get as much experience if, as you can across all the areas. So if you if you are working in a in a fairly narrow role, that's fine. You know, pick out some community examples to do stuff. Pick up, you know, go to data.world or or whatever. There's 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 you know about a million COVID data sets right now that you could you could probably get your hands on if you wanted to try try some of those. So again, maybe try some of those from the angles that you don't work well that, that much with. So whether that's data prep or data modeling or data visualization and, you know, challenge yourself with those. And, and that's that's advice goes for, for generally for learning Power BI, but it's also quite important for the exam because it is very practical um, based. So um, it, it allows you to communicate a decent base level proficiency with Power BI. So it's not going to land you a job just having the certification, but you know, if I'm I, I do bits of recruitment, so I do interviews and things as well for for Power BI roles in a company that I work in. And if I see someone with a DA100 who passed it, I'll be like, okay, that's good. At least I kind of you know they've ticked that box. I know they've got that kind of base level of, of knowledge. If they don't, I, I assume they'd still have that level of knowledge, and I'd obviously need to tease that out in the interview anyway. Um, and you know. The point is, if someone fails the exam, they're not going to put it on their CV. So it's not really a way for me to be able to judge. But, you know, it's nice to be able to see that when people have it on their on their CV that, you know, yeah, they've, they've ticked that box. They've got that level of proficiency. Um, and, you know, so it, it might so it might help you, especially you know, to get into a new role. And often it helps you in your current role. So, you know, where I work, I think there's exam bonuses. 
so if you pass exams and it's looked upon quite favorably so you know for the role that i do as a power bi consultant um you know having having microsoft certifications and qualifications is definitely something that they're that they're looking for and that they appreciate um and i think they reward as well um kind of financially so hopefully your your company might pay for you to take it as well so it costs 165 dollars to take um, so, you know, see if you can get that. If you, if you work for a company, you should be able to claim it back. If you, if you work for yourself, um, you should be able to take, claim it back as a tax expense, as an allowable tax deduction, because it's something that's, that's relevant to your, to your role and to your job. So, um, either way, you should be able to, to get that money back somehow, or at least some of it. So, um, what does it cover? So, there's that they break down the syllabus. So if you just type into search engine Power BI Idea 100, the first page that should come up is the exam page. And under there, you can go to skills outline. And this will give you all of these different areas. So you've got prepare the data. So there's a lot here. Now, when people are looking at some of these things, they're like, gosh, I don't know about every single one of those. And you come to things like tax and you're like, well, you know, I could spend the next three years of my life learning tax. And how, you know, am I still going to be at the level where it says you could write complex tax formula as well? I don't know. So don't take this too literally, right? I think none of, you know, they're not going to test your level of tax to the level of, you know, have you done the optimizing tax course by Alberto and Marco? And can you, can you understand all of these nuances? They're not going to go into that level. They're going to check that you can that you could write, you know, fairly basic tax statements that you understand, you know, the basics of row and filter context and things like that. Um, and with the data prep, there might be a couple of things here that that you that you haven't used, right? So again, just familiarize yourself with them is I think the main thing. So for example, profile the data. Perhaps you haven't gone in to look at the column distribution, column quality. Um, uh, features within the query editor so have a look at those it will allow you know and familiarize yourself with how they work what kind of clicks you need to do to get them what kind of things they show um, and then you know clean transform loaded data as long as you've got experience doing these kind of things broadly i think i think you'll be you'll be okay right so you know most people ask if you've done a bit of work in the query editor you would have done things like um combined queries you know renamed queries things like that um and you know, as you're doing things, make sure you're paying a bit more attention to what you're doing as you do these things. Sometimes it's very easy to just know how to do it, but not remember when asked how you do it because it's it's you do it almost on autopilot. So so actually, for some, if you've got quite a lot of experience in Power BI, you, you sometimes need to take a take a step back and think about what you're doing with stuff. And as you as you're doing it, just think about, yep, I know how to do this, and go go through this list as well, and just kind of make sure that you know the kind of clicks involved or the processes involved in these. Um, I said that they're, they're fairly high level. Data modeling, um, again, know some of the concepts with these around, around table relationships, bi-directional filters, many to many. Um, you know, it's not going to be hugely, hugely detailed, but these things are, are quite interesting. So parent-child hierarchy. So again, that might be something you look at and say, I've never done that. So have, have a look at that online. It's, you know, you could use path function in DAX, for example, to flatten out that hierarchy. Uh, role plane dimensions might be a term you've come across, might not. If so, you know, you've got, everyone's got access to this guide, so have a look at it. Um, you know, it might come up in the exam, it might not, but it's a good thing to know about, you know, could you have copies of dimension tables that could serve different purposes, so for different fact table fields, for dates, for example. Um, and yeah, some of these things. So again, you know, Q and A. If you haven't used it before, again, just have a look at it, read up on on some of these things. Uh, model data is quite big. Um, it's to say, use DAX to build complex measures. That could, you know, that in itself could be easily an exam and easily could take up many many months of your life. But I don't think it needs to test it to that level of detail. Um, but what, if you've been writing DAX for a while, again, you should be able to deal with the level of DAX that they'll ask you in the exam. Um, optimizing model performance is a really good one. It's a, I'm glad I saw that on there because, you know, it's something that's not necessarily thought out that well um, generally. So it's something that's very, very important in Power BI about how can you optimize your data models? How can you get the size down? Um, so yeah, again, if you haven't looked into that kind of area, then they do that. They're not going to ask you questions on, you know, storage engine versus formula engine and things like that. But 
to get to level of detail of how could you bring your model down and what would be the ways for you to optimize the state of model. Um, have a have a think about that. Visualizing. So again, if you've got experience building visuals, I think you'll be you'll be fine. You know, there's a lot of the stuff on the formatting options and things like that. So again, you know, pay attention to what some of those you, things you can do and not do, like additional formatting and things like that. And dashboards. Um, again, you know, if you if you haven't used them that much, then either just have a play around and see what you can do with dashboards, and also do a bit of reading on the Microsoft Docs. I'll come back to to preparation on that one. Um, yeah, these are all kind of standard features within Power BI. So the other thing I forgot to mention actually is they're not going to test for preview features. Um, so there are still quite a few features, especially maybe on the visualization side, which is still in preview and they won't come on the exam at that time. But obviously the exam is continually updated. And to be honest, if it was me, I would still learn those features anyway, because it's good stuff to know. And you never know, you know, if you happen to happens to come out of preview and then you take the exam and you haven't haven't learned it then you know that's not that's not good so learn it anyway but just bear in mind they're not going to ask you for the stuff that's still in preview um analyze the data so this a lot of this is about the ai visuals the key influencers decomposition tree it's really about these and q a um so there's a lot of those and also things like grouping and binning um and you know things like reference lines and the chart so some you know some i for example never really use stuff like that but actually going into the exam, I'll, something, I'll just make sure that I've, I at least know how it works. Um, deploy and maintain deliverables. I mean, this is a big area. I know it's only 10 to 50% of the exam, but obviously this is everything in the Power BI service. So managing data sets, managing workspaces, distributing, sharing and collaborating content. Um, and those are your kind of main areas. Any any questions on, on that? No, nothing in the chat at the no. minute. Okay, so that brings us to the last point around how you should prepare. So uh, there's hi, a few. Vicky. Yeah, hi there. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So is this course going to cover any questions from Power BI Report Server? Oh, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, yep. So I can hear you now. So what happened there? Oh, sorry. Could you repeat that question? So my question is, is the course DA100, are there any questions from Power BI Report Server? Power BI Report Server, um, I don't I don't remember specifically, mm -hmm. but if if there is, um, it will be, it's not going to be really detailed, right? So again, if, if you, as long as you have an awareness of Power BI Report Server, why you'd use Power BI Report Server, and kind mm -hmm. of what you could do, what the differences are. So actually, if you, one of the Microsoft Docs pages is differences between Power BI and Power BI Report Server. So mm -hmm. if you're familiar with that knowledge, you'll be fine. Right. You okay. don't need, that's one of the areas I've, I, I would say you don't necessarily need to go out and get huge amounts mm -hmm. of practical experience on because it's it's a niche area. They're not going to expect you to, to, to sit there and work, having worked with Report Server and know the intricacies of that. And there's another question as well, which is kind of along the same lines. Is, is there anything in the chat? Is there anything related to premium features, Power BI Premium? Yeah, I yeah, I, I, I think there is. Um, yeah, I think there is. I mean, I mean, I when I've, I'm now come to this in a minute, but you know, when I've done my quizzes, I've put a lot on premium and my quizzes because, and probably more so than is in the exam, but. To be and I, and I know a lot of people don't have access to premium and, and hopefully that will change you know with premium per user and things like that but um yeah I'd you know if, if, if you can only get theoretical knowledge on premium then that's still better than nothing I think there is still some stuff in premium premium is a big thing in power bi right um those kind of they, you know those what the, the, the licensing model but also some of the features and, and you know the use case of it it's, it's a big thing for power bi so I wouldn't I wouldn't go into the exam just saying right well you know, they can't expect me to have done premium because, you know, it costs $5,000 a month and, you know, I don't have access to premium, so I'm not going to do it. So for, for mm. those kind of areas where you don't get as much hands-on experience using it, then try and at least build up theoretical knowledge on it. Okay, thanks. And, you know, think, think about scenarios in which you'd, which they'd be applicable, right? Because as I say, the exam, you know, it, it is obviously still, as I say, it's, it's obviously a theoretical exam in the sense of it's testing knowledge, but the scenario is more scenario based. It's more, well, what would you do in a situation? How would you how would you try and um, achieve something like this? So um, 
in terms of how you should prepare, I mean, I'll come to some of that as well and some of these questions of that. So there's Microsoft Learn. Um, I haven't gone through all of this, actually, because this came out fairly recently. And actually, I wrote vast majority of my quiz questions before before this came out. Um, so I, I was go going to go through them and kind of, you know, pick up if there's any other things I wanted to test on here. And I haven't really had the chance to do that yet. But I think it looks from what I've seen of it, it looks really good. Um, they give you little knowledge checks and things as well. And obviously these questions are not the kind of questions you're going to get in the exam. It's not, you know, if you can answer these, you'll be able to answer the, ex the, the questions in the exam. So don't take these as practice questions. They're just, they're just, have you read, have you, have you actually read this, this um, learning, uh, Microsoft learn, learn document. Um, there is also some labs in there as well. Again, I haven't tried those, but I think those, those would be really good where you can actually do some hands-on labs experience. Again, I think for Power BI, perhaps you probably have your own environment anyway and your own data sets, but it saves you having to, to do that. I think it gives you them preloaded with, with a data set and things like that. So, um, you know, that sounds like it'll be, it'll be quite good. Um, definitely have a look through Microsoft Learn. It's all free. So again, if you go onto the DA100 page, the Microsoft one at the bottom is a link to all of the learn contents of these learning paths. Um, and they're not, they're not massively long. So it's a good way, good thing to go through, definitely. And, and again, you're looking at this and reading, if, if all of this stuff makes sense to you in the Microsoft Learns and you, you, you get it all, then, you know, I think you'll be fine for the exam, right? So it, it's, it's if there's a lot, if there's things in there that are quite new and you don't know, then, then start to look into it more and, and make a note of those areas that you're thinking, actually, I haven't really come across this before. I say, I can imagine that being quite common. Well, you haven't come across every good Power BI. I haven't come across every good Power BI and I've been working with it every day for, for years. So, um, there are courses, and I'm a little bit loath to, to recommend courses. I mean, I think they're, they're, they're fairly expensive to do kind of instructor-led courses. Again, this is one of the things that is linked to on the page. I've not sat one, of, done one of these courses, so instructor-led training is one of the options, and they give you then a list of um, vendors who, who signed up to provide this specific course. Um, I mean, to be honest, I don't, I don't know how, how much a course will be able to cover in those days. And again, if you get, it's, it's a lot of this is, it's down to practical experience. So, you know, ha cramming a whole load of knowledge in four days, I don't know how, how much that would help you on the exam. Um, you know, maybe, maybe it's worth doing. I mean, I, I do think face-to-face -face training is good. Don't get me wrong, I don't know if we can even do face-to-face -face anymore, it's probably virtual, but um, yeah, you know, I don't know about the courses, but they're there as an option. And if your company is gonna pay for you to do it, and you know, why not? It's a, it's a good thing to do. I just wouldn't say, okay, if you you know if you pay attention for four days in a course you'll definitely pass the exam i'd be a little bit loath to draw that draw that comparison there is um another course that's done by um another vmvp is called parker parker stevens bi elite so he's got a da exam prep course uh, again i haven't sat this course um so i haven't enrolled in it but it's it's, it's only 29 dollars um and i've seen some of his content it is good so i imagine i imagine the course will be quite good as well so just to, to chip in, Rishi, so mm -hmm. I, I did do that one with BI oh, Elite with Parker. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I found it was really good, and it, but it helped me kind of understand the context of what the learning modules were about. So things like right. kind of, you know, identifying outliers in data and things like that, you know, it just kind of helped me get that context right in my mind before I took the exam. What does, what does that actually mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was, you know, so you can you sign up for a, a monthly um, monthly subscription of $29, but then you mm -hmm. can cancel it in the same month. So it only costs $29 in the end. So I, th right. I thought it was worth right. it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think all, I mean, there's, there's a lot of learning material, but I think courses are good um definitely um you know i'm I'm looking to put together a course as well i i'm gonna try and focus my courses i think not so much on on da 100 and and kind of breadth but you know focus on on a kind of specific roles like almost like that like the works of certification is or even particular sectors like finance and things like that i think you know that would be that would be where i want to go run courses but yeah absolutely if there's some courses that can cover it's, it's a broad area to cover the whole of power bi <laughs> Right. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know how much detail they can go into. But yeah, absolutely. Courses, courses are always good. Um, if you if you've got the time to do this. Um, and then I mean one of the best ways I think to to um to kind of prepare for the exam is is to kind of try and identify and fill some of those knowledge gaps. And that was really why I put together these set of quizzes on, on Learn Data Insights was to help people to, to to use more of a learning exercise than a testing exercise. 
right? So um, yes, you can do it and just you know see what scores you get and see if you you know if you if you get a hard exam. But I've made them purposely a lot harder than the real exam anyway. Um, so and and the idea is that with these quizzes and I'll, I'll do a little demo if we've got time. But the idea with the quizzes is when you take the questions, they also give you feedback straight away and links to where you can learn more. So most of these links are to Microsoft Docs or Microsoft Learn. So actually, you could use this very much as a learning exercise. Um, and quizzes, talking of quizzes, um, Catherine's been on a couple of these, um, which is where just just um, from from Denmark has been hosting a weekly quiz on a, on a Wednesday evening. Um, he's had all of these kind of celebrities on there. Actually, I've done one quiz as well um, on, on this kind of DA100, kind of broad, broad across Power BI uh, last season. Um, so these these are a lot of fun. Um, again, these these are quite hard. You know, it's not it's not the kind of questions you'd get in an exam. They're they're probably harder than that, and you know a little bit more abstract than that. But um, it's still really good because you'll go for one of these topics. You know, like Power BI Embedded or Power BI Premium. And you know you'll see you you'll just learn a lot from from the quiz questions and from the answers from it. So I think this is definitely one of the best ways to to identify knowledge gaps. So I say not everyone everyone's not going to know everything about Power BI. So actually you want to hone in on the bits that you don't know and then learn a bit more about those. So so quizzes I think are a really good way to do it. Um, have we got a few minutes now? I can I can show the quizzes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. So. Um, Oh, this was powerplatformfinance.com, by the way. I was saying this is the other community. So if we go to webinars, um, you can see all the stuff that we've done. The past webinars. So say we've um, had some ones on dynamics. Um, we've had Chris Hamill from the Power BI CAT team um, go for a session on, on visual design. Um, and then cash flow statements, commentary apps, power apps, power automate integration. Um, and then some of these vendors who do financial modeling and planning tools. Um, Android, who some of you might know, is a, is a data platform MVP as well, Zebra BI. So looking at how how you do visual design. So not directly relevant to the exam, but this kind of stuff is is really really good um, knowledge if you're into Power BI. So the site for the quizzes is LearnDataInsights.com. Um, that takes you to this page, um, and you'll have to log in first. So I've actually already logged in. So if you go to, so you'll see here on the menu we've got quizzes. So we've got Excel, Power BI, and Python. So the Power BI ones are all geared towards the DA100. And I've got one more, actually, I'm just going to add, which is a bit more of the kind of, it's aimed more at the case studies. It's a little bit more detailed questions, more role play based. Um, something I've been experimenting with, I'll, I'll put that up shortly. Um, and then we've got X, we've got some Excel how-to topics and Power BI how-to topics as well. So I've got some example reports and then some topics that I've started writing out. So I, I haven't done a huge amount on these yet, to be honest, because to be honest, when I'm looking at Google Analytics and seeing what people are consuming on this site, it's it's almost all these quizzes. So you know we've had tens of thousands of, of quiz attempts um, in the past few months. So clearly these are these are very popular, and this is where you know um, Naveen and I, who I'm working with, are, are putting our time at the moment. So if we go into one of the quizzes, so you have to log in to take the quizzes, um, and you can log in with Google, LinkedIn, or live. So if I just pick um, LinkedIn, and then we can go to the quizzes. And each each question bank for each of these quizzes, so it's, it's broken down into the modules of the exam. So prepare the data model, visualize. So this is prepare the data. It says it's 20, 25% of the overall exam. And there's 100 questions in the bank. And each quiz attempt is 15. Uh, I'm actually going to put some shorter ones on there as well, because I, I can see there's lots of people who who don't complete an exam but do sign up. And the only reason they sign up would be to take a quiz. So my my suspicion is 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 sometimes this is taking a bit long and you know people are going to sit there for 15 questions. So I'll put some shorter ones on there as well, where you can do you know quick five five questions or so. Um, the question styles are very similar to to the real exam, so mainly multiple choice, but quite a few multiple responses here. I've got quite a few multiple responses in this one. Um, and you get partially correct answers for those multiple responses. And I've also got some sequence of drag and drops, things like that. So if you put it in, so they will say it's partially correct. And then it will give you links to, to Microsoft Docs where you can learn more about that specific um, area. Um, and it's got, you can see your score there. So you can number questions and you've got the score at the end. Um, 
it's probably not a huge amount of point in me going through all of these questions just to get to the end of it. Um, but what, so what we need to see is kind of where we get to the end. So add a column from examples. So we'll go through again, what I've tried to do is make these a bit more scenario based as well. So not just, you know, testing root knowledge, but kind of how would you, you're working with this data where you need to extract elements of a value. Um, how would you do it? Would you use regular expression? Would you use split by columns or something like this? So again, it's 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 using that functionality, that knowledge, but trying to apply it into, into a scenario. Um, right, so that's that's the bulk of the quizzes. I'm just conscious of time. So let's let's head back to the last few slides of the presentation. Is there any any questions, any other questions so far? I guess we have Paul. some questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so Paul asked okay. if the quizzes are in the same format as the exam. I My questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, similar. So for the multiple similar. choice sections, they're, yeah. they're fairly similar. Yeah, so the question types like multiple choice, um, you know, with a few sequence, drag and drop, those types of questions, they're all fairly standard question types. So it's mainly things like multiple choice um, and a few kind of, you know, um, you know, drag, drag this into the right sequence or fill in the drag the right words into into the empty spaces in a block of text or something like that yeah. so um those kind of questions i think are fairly similar um in the exam any other any other questions no 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 okay so um yeah, hopefully that's that's a quick demo of kind of the of the LDI site, and obviously please do do go those, give those a try. And if you've got any feedback, there's there's links to give feedback on specific questions, and then on this on the front page of the website to give feedback overall. Um, obviously, just feel free to reach out to me. Um, that would be that would be great. I would appreciate any feedback on that as well. Um, uh, this is the kind of question I suppose, suppose people are asking as well when I when I show this is you know how realistic is this to the real exam so I say the formats and the types are similar to the, to the main section of the real exam um, and they cover similar topics but they're not they're not in any way exam dumps right they're you know I don't I don't remember all of the stuff that I did on the exam and I didn't you know write questions that I remember from the exam um, that would be breaching NDA so so don't don't do exam dumps. They, you know, if people claim to have exam dumps, it's illegal for a start, and you'll get your certification revoked if, if Microsoft finds out. Um, and so, yeah, these questions are not so realistic that they they mirror the exam at all. But as I say, I've made them a fair bit harder. So I think I've covered more areas than the exam. Like I've covered, I've covered features that are still in preview um, to to stay ahead of it, um, and I've I've covered features. I've covered much more on stuff like Power BI Premium than I think is in the real exam, that at least I remember. But again, I think it's an important area. So I think for, for Learn Data Insights, use it as a learning tool. So it's not just practice of, you know, can you do a practice exam, but use those feedback links and learn, read those topics. Um, and, you know, do give feedback if a question is unclear. Uh, and I think this is this is kind of a general thing. So having sat out there and written lots of quiz questions myself, I've I've noticed it's quite hard to do this, right? To to, to write questions and, and and the Microsoft um team probably have exactly the same challenge because it's difficult to provide enough context to a question in a short question. Um because often with something like Power BI, which is could be quite complex, and there's multiple ways to do the same thing. You know, the answer could be, well, it depends. How would I do this? Well, actually, it depends on this, this, and this. So then you have to try and provide enough context to say, well, you want to try and achieve this outcome. And, and actually, you need to bear this in mind so that they've got, you know, a limited, whatever it is, those different scenarios. So that's what they've tried to do then. That's why they've done the case study questions. So my advice on that would be for both for both LDI and obviously for the real exam is, 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 is say, it's quite hard to write questions with appropriate level of context. But one of the things that's easy to do, especially if you've got lots of experience with Power BI, is to overthink it. And so as a general tip, try not to overthink it. Um, because, you know, sometimes I say, you could look at it and you think, no, but actually I would do it this way, or maybe you could do it this way. But think about what the question's really trying to get at. So it's trying to understand whether someone knows about the feature of Power BI, or knows how to use Power BI in that context. So even though there are nuances which might invalidate what is what 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 is the correct answer? Go with that gut feel about what you think the correct answer is getting at. It, it, does that make sense to you guys? I know that's 
that's a little bit of a strange point, but I, I don't know. I feel that's quite important to, to get across. Um, so the case study questions do give you more context, but that, that presents challenges in another way, because then you're going to have to try and remember all that context and apply it. And as I say, for the first set of case study questions, I didn't even actually uh, realize that it provided you all this context. So, uh, you know, those it's, it's, it's uh, both sets. If you have lots of context or you have little context, it can make it quite hard. So with where you've got little context in the bulk of the exam, just go with your gut feel, go with what you think they're getting at with the question. Try not to overthink it. And then for the case study, um, yeah, pick up specific clues in the context they give you to, to be able to answer it. Yep, and then yep, you won't know every question, have confidence in your ability, and don't use exam dumps, whatever you do. Um, they're, you know, they, they, what, so exam dumps are where people have gone in um, and sat the exam presumably multiple times and just try to remember everything they could from the exam and, and copy out the questions. So <laughs> I got I saw a post this morning actually on um on uh on the Power BI community site, someone asking for exam tops. And I've put I've posted on the community site saying don't don't do this. But um clearly, clearly people will anyway. Cool. So that was all I had. Any other any other kind of questions to, to wrap up? No, I think there was a couple of other questions about kind of small specifics about which were the hardest parts and as there any DAX in there. Um, I've answered some of them in the chat, so. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you've Hopefully. sat the exam probably more recently than I have, actually. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've probably got a better memory of this stuff than I do anyway as well. I mean, I've always been like that with exams. When I, you, you kind of cram for them or you, you know, especially when you do that, but you come out of an exam and you've just, you, I don't remember anything. It's like a blur. Oh. <laughs> It's like a complete mind blank, so which is good because otherwise I would be breaching NDA. So it's it's probably quite a good thing in my case. I can't remember what was actually on the exam. Oh. Can I say something on this? I, I also made the exam already, and I thought it was pretty difficult actually. Uh, I agree. Well, not yeah. not really difficult, but <laughs> different than I thought of. I, it's not just learning. It was important what you said about not being on your autopilot because the exam is really about having it all done. I mean, I've seen print screens and they showed you things and you had to answer what has been, uh, what were the options that have been chosen here? Well, yes. normally you just click something and you don't know what happens, but exactly. you, this way, exactly. it was the other way around. <laughs> so that made me uh, <laughs> yeah, get That's confused a bit. Yeah. So that, I, I found that a strange question. And the, and, the, and the case studies are, well, uh, difficult too because there's a lot of text and you actually have three or more yes. stories in one text and you have yes. to go back and forth etc and so you have yeah. to really uh, separate a few stories uh, while answering questions yeah so I, I i found that the most challenging part of the exam yeah uh, but as i say the the other way around where they don't give you any context makes it hard as well because then you're thinking you you tend to overthink it. You think, well, actually, maybe it could be this, or maybe it could be this. Actually, because yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on the context of the scenario, and they haven't given you that much information for you to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So, so this is what I'm saying. I, you, we see these questions, even Donald, Donald saying he's seen me on the on, the, on just quiz. So yeah, I mean, even with those questions as well, right? And Donald will probably agree with that as well. So, you know, you're thinking that, and you you second guess yourself a few times on the questions because. You know, you, they've just asked you a question and actually because you know there's multiple ways to achieve the same thing you don't necessarily know which one is getting that so go with your gut feel in terms of well if i was asking this question and i was testing someone on power bi what would what would be what would be i what would i be trying to get at with this question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and i think that's you know rather than rather than yeah. thinking about all the possible things that you could probably do yeah. um in terms of minimum minimum number of years experience i mean i'd say at least six to 12 months of work with Power BI. But I, I mean, it's, 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 it's obviously not, you know, hard and fast rule, but I, I think you do need a bit of experience of working with it. I think it's yeah. much harder to pass this exam with just purely theoretical knowledge rather than practical. I don't think you would make it <laughs> with just <laughs> learning. I mean, yeah. I don't think, yeah, I think you, you have to have had some experience yeah. and had probably your fingers burned at least once by, you know, make, yeah. making mistakes and designing reports and so on, because then that's kind of how you learn to, to do them properly. Um, and I think that the scenario based questions I, I found were, were interesting, but I think that the whole, the setup of the proctoring, I, I didn't, I didn't find that an enjoyable experience at all. No, um, no. 
uh, and I think that you know, so I, had a, I had my laptop and I had a big screen uh, attached to my laptop that wouldn't let me have that. I said I can only work on a laptop. So you were kind of you switching between uh, screens between the the case of the text and then the actual questions, and it just it was a little bit, um, you know, a little bit like that. But yeah, they're very oh strict to the pro They're very strict mm. to the proctoring. Like mm. you know, you can't have anything open, like stuff in your taskbar. You you know, no. you, you can't. I, I got called out a few times for covering my face, which I yep. probably should be doing as well. every time anyway. Yeah. But <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely. Um, any que so how many scenario based questions? Yeah, so I think there was two. Is it two two sets of scenario questions at about? Three I, to four I had each, yeah. two, yeah, yeah. And yeah, two four, two scenario based questions. But I think the vast majority are the kind of multiple choice and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, I, and I think I've been mean, looking at my scores. I, I think that's where I messed up actually on the on the um, on the case study ones. Um, any sure. questions on M language? Yeah, yep. I think I'm pretty sure there are. Again, I mean, you know, they're not you, they're, they're not going to test every single thing on on kind of you know M functions and stuff like that. But and you can it'll, it'll be things like, but you won't have to know what some of those M functions are. But to be honest, most of them you could read as English, right? And you can kind of work out what they're doing, things like that. So I would have to, I wouldn't sit there and study the whole M language, but yeah. have a feel for what, what those formulas look like and what they kind of do. So, you know, when you, when you do something through the UI, have a feel for how it is, um, looks at the, um, in the, in the, in the query code as well. And then yes, I see Gavin's asking as well. So kind of the DAX questions, yeah, there there are quite a few fill in the blanks with those. I think so. You just fill in the, you know, fill in the blanks to drag, calculate, or all, or where would you put them? So stuff like that is is kind of how you do it. Um, yeah, Gavin saying the same thing as well about going back and forth. Um, cool. I think yeah, I think that's that's it. Yeah, no notes. That was a bit annoying. I think when I did the first, when I did the exam initially, I'm sure they gave me a. Um, a little whiteboard and pen thing, not a little, a little piece of paper and a pen thing. So I'm sure I could take notes of the first time when I sat at an exam centre. But yeah, I think this time around they didn't. I wasn't allowed to have any pen or paper, or anything on my desk at no. all, um, which was which is a bit annoying. I, I think sometimes you know when you're reading a question on screen as well, you you can tend to read it out to yourself out loud. Right. And I, right. I, I was even kind of told by the proctors not to do that as well. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, sure. can't cover your mouth, can't make a noise, can't talk, yeah. and, and and I guess you know that they they want to make sure no one's cheating and everything else, and I understand that, but it just it was, um, you know that they were very on on the ball. Let's say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So how how I prepared? So I actually prepared for the exam by writing quiz questions. <laughs> Well, that was the, the initial exam I did. I wrote that was so the, the initial exam I did two years ago, seventy seven, seven eight, seven seven nine. I did a quiz. I did a quiz as preparation for it, and actually that was my prep for it. And that's where that's where this whole thing came from two years ago. And then this time round, to be honest, if you've been using Power BI for a number of years, like I have, you don't need to specifically prepare for it. Right? It's just you'll you'll know the knowledge you know at that point. But have a scan through. Have a scan through those skills, and just if there's anything you're just like oh I haven't come across that before just go and go and look it up and that's what I'm saying identify those knowledge gaps right so um you know if you can do quizzes and stuff like that then there's a good that's a good way to do it um go through the Microsoft Docs to be honest um I went through the Microsoft Docs the Microsoft Learn materials mm -hmm. yeah exactly if, if you're reading through the Microsoft Learn materials and you you recognize all the stuff that they're talking about in there you'll be you'll be fine and actually the Microsoft Learn stuff where I did find things were really useful were things like you know, like key influence as a decomp tree. So it's not for those things, for example, I haven't used them a great amount, or at least I had it, especially when I sat the exam. So I was like, mm, okay, I'm not sure if I know enough to mm -hmm. be able to answer specific questions on it. But the learn docs go through that in quite a lot of detail. So just by reading that, I had enough to, to know what to do. I took a Udemy course. Uh, it, it was very uh, useful as well, because then you get all the topics that are on the exam. Uh, requirements which which course sorry uh well i posted two udemy uh links oh, udemy. in the chat yeah okay. and they they have this uh cheap action so it cost me only 10 euros or so this course so it's <laughs> yeah. it's worth it it's worth it, uh, the worth of money and it's a video course with testing etc so you could just okay. could just pick out the, the topics you like i mean you can leave the rest but all those things you don't know about well you could just watch the video and then it's okay okay yeah.
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's as I'm saying, it's it's quite a lot of um. There's a lot of material. Like Power BI has a very broad area, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I I don't know how much a course would cover kind of the full breadth of it. Um, you know, which is why I'm saying when I'm doing courses, I'm I'm thinking of doing them quite niche and focused rather than broad. Um, but yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. I mean, I think all of this stuff is all of this stuff is good. But you never have to pay two hundred pounds for a course on Udemy. <laughs> you'll, find, no. you'll, you'll find them for ten pounds normally, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you sign up, you look at a couple of courses, and then you go away for a couple of days, and you know, that's when you get the special offers coming in. There you go. Exactly. There you go. There's, there's the trick. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks. I know I ran a little bit over there, but no, thanks for your thanks for your time and attention, everyone. Um, and if anyone does have any questions or then as well, just yeah, drop me an email and um, let me know anything about about your experiences and stuff as well. It'd be good to hear some other people who've taken the exam or taking it and, and preparing and so, yeah, good to hear some more experiences. Especially if you if you try some of the quizzes on the site and what you think, um, that would be that'd be great. Thanks okay. very much. Great. Thank you. Right. Thanks very much. Thanks, Rishi. All right. Cheers, then. Speak soon. Yes, thanks very much.